Leader One is ready for some more air combat with today's game, Afterburner 2, for your Sega Genesis. Let's go ahead and take Afterburner 2, pop it in my Sega Genesis, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Afterburner 2 was published by Sega and carries a copyright year of 1990. It is based on the 1987 arcade game, which was more of an update than a sequel to the original Afterburner. According to the manual, your once peaceful nation has been under siege by General Zobia and his armed forces of Halvary, which I believe is located in Halberta, Hanada. You're the pilot of the Skycat, an F-14XX fighter, and it's up to you to destroy two enemy microwave stations and return to your carrier called the Sega Enterprise. And just like many other military-based games, it seems like the rest of your forces are complete cowards, and it's up to you alone to complete this mission. Afterburner 2 is an arcade-style action game for one player only. In the options screen, you could choose your level of difficulty from easy, normal, or hard. Choose which of the three buttons will make you go faster, make you go slower, or fire a missile, and choose if you want up on the D-pad to make you go up or down. During the game, your cannons automatically fire unless you choose a controller option where you need to fire them manually, but in this setup, there is no button to slow down. No matter which control setup you use, you can actually increase your speed up to two levels, with the second press of the fast button activating your afterburners. While flying, you will be notified when your targeting computer has locked onto a target. Firing a missile on a locked target usually ends up in a successful hit, unless the locked target gets too near to you. You start the game with 50 missiles and can get an additional 50 missiles during the air refueling stages, which happens automatically from time to time, but your fighter can hold no more than 100 missiles at a time. Occasionally, an enemy fighter or missile will approach from behind, at which point you either need to speed up to try and outrun them or slow down hoping they will pass right by you instead. You can also perform a roll technique by pressing either left or right all the way and then quickly changing directions to the opposite side to help you sometimes avoid the enemies throughout the game. The game is comprised of 23 stages. The manual actually has a decent map showing you the route you're taking, although you don't need to worry about which direction you fly in the game. Stages 8 and 17 represent the microwave stations you're trying to destroy. They basically act like bonus stages with more points awarded for destroying more equipment, but they also have large columns you need to avoid. And I'm not talking about the puzzle game that was Sega's response to Tetris. You get three lives and three continues. You can enter your initials if you get a high score, but just like many other cartridges from this era, your score will be erased when you turn the system off. Graphically speaking, the game looks pretty impressive for an early release, although I did notice some minor graphical glitches here and there. The game also has a solid soundtrack with some decent sound effects. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today, since when the 32X version came out, it got a kids to adult rating. At the time I researched on eBay, including shipping, loose copies were going for $9 to $12 and complete copies were going for $12 to $16. So what did I think of Afterburner 2 on the Sega Genesis? Overall, I think it's a well-made game for what it is, especially considering the time it came out, but personally, I just don't enjoy this type of game for the most part. In these type of games, everything just seems so chaotic. From the game's point of view, I would have preferred if it was more like a flight simulator with less chaos and more strategy, or if they changed the view to a top-down view, I would have rather played it like a shooter. But then again, that's just my preferences for games. I also thought that the game was quite challenging to finish on the three lives and three continues you get, but there are stage select cheats available online. So in the end, this game might appeal to fans of this style of action, but for me, it doesn't do much. So where am I going to rank Afterburner 2? Probably a lot lower than most. I will put it over the recently reviewed Jordan vs. Bird at 16. But even though Afterburner 2 is a better made game, I actually enjoy the cheesy action of Pit Fighter more at 15. So out of the 23 games I've now ranked on the Sega Genesis, Afterburner 2 is rolling into the 16th position. Afterburner 2 is recommended for those who like this type of game, but personally, I have a difficult time enjoying it. So what do you think of the game? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and follow me both on the Facebook or the Twitter. And I'm a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank Mark A. for supporting the show at patreon.com slash gamer. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care, and if you happen to have the authority to do so, please name the next U.S. aircraft carrier the Sega Enterprise.